I can't wait any longer. I want to do something with the 40 gallon racking system. If you guys remember, there's six 40 gallon aquariums in this system right here alone. Down below, quarantine tanks. And then these two, and these two are standalone systems. Look, using sponge filters to filter them. And I want to set them up, scape them all individually and do a bunch of fish that belong in a 40 gallon aquarium. I'm actually really excited to get into kind of some nano fish and maybe we'll do a pet fish in one of them or something. But bottom line is this, and I know you can't stop looking at that. So check this out. I just recently scaped this out. I think it looks perfect for one of these aquariums. Everything's just kind of balanced there. I'm just, I'm, I'm lying. You guys know I'm lying. This isn't real. Check this out. Technically a background or one of those types of things. AquaDecorBackgrounds.com sent it to me and I was like, what am I supposed to do with this? And I was like, oh, it's probably for one of my 40s because they watch my videos and whenever I got an empty tank, these random boxes show up at the house and they're like, you're gonna love it. And uh, I was like, I really don't know if I want to use this because I want to escape it and I want to set it up. But to be honest with you, I think this is absolutely amazing, especially for people that are scaping challenged like myself. I will be doing this for all my aquariums. I'm gonna do it once, uh, simply because this thing is just awesome. But then I was thinking, well, I have backgrounds for all of them and I have plans and scapes that I kind of want to do, but this will be the only tank without a background, so it's gonna look kind of silly. So it's never been used. It's wet because it was raining outside and I store a lot of my stuff just outside because these are like indestructible. But uh, this is not a background. It's meant to go on the floor of an aquarium and you can see the cutout where the background would have fit. This is supposed to go on the floor of the aquarium. So you can technically have your whole tank look like this uh, or it's great for like fish that dig and whatnot. Anyways, uh, since I don't use it um, and I've been thinking of a reason, I think I'm gonna cut it to fit in the back of this because I think that looks absolutely amazing. Now wait, this kind of like, let's wait till we see the tank. Not, I'm not even decided yet. This depends on the type of fish that is going in it. You see, I start with the type of fish I wanna keep and then I build the scape or build the tank around them. There's only one fish that this is going to look awesome with and one fish that was planning on going into the 40s. Anyways, let me show you. That would be my shell dwellers that are currently in a 120 gallon tank with Frontosa. Now, this tank is uh, incredibly covered in algae. I'm actually tearing it down because you guys know we're switching all of these out for uh, 180, so I'm just letting the algae go nuts uh, at this point, which is completely fine, to be honest with you. The water quality in this is better than any other aquarium, simply because we have pothos up top, plenty of algae, we've got live plants in there. There's almost no reason to do a water change, and the water is just like evaporating. It's in, been such a realization for me uh, as of late that you know we can really just enjoy our tanks a lot of times instead of doing all this work constantly. Anyways, I have a bunch of African shell dwellers in here. In fact, I have uh, some multifasciatus, as you can see right there. What I'm thinking of doing is taking the same type of substrate, you know, you know, kind of tossing it on top of this stuff and around it. So this is exposed, but there is substrate as well. Um, and then I take, you know, let's say a couple of pairs out of here. There's some more over here. Uh, and we start a whole new colony in one of those 40s. And then we can compare what they're like with active predators in the tank versus an aquarium all to themselves. Now, I'm thinking about doing nano fish in this one and nano fish in this one. I'm thinking a pistol grama, and then I'm thinking the African shell dwellers or vice versa. It's, at the end of the day, it's not really gonna matter. Now, why would we put them up top? You'd think you put them in the middle. Absolutely not. Um, these guys like the bottom and I'm like head, uh, when I come up to the tank, I can see like this portion of it. It's gonna be perfect viewing for me. Plus with the podcast and whatnot, you guys would be able to see them as well. So I think it would look Awesome. Downside is this isn't uh, going to fit in that tank as is. So I got to make some adjust adjustments um, and make some cuts here. So I'll do that real quick and we'll, we'll just see what it's going to look like. And then we'll get your guys' opinion. And then, you know, we'll go from there. Joey with power tools never ends well. I don't know if you guys remember, but I almost cut my entire finger off at one point. I was taking apart my 540 gallon tank that I built years ago. I was taking that apart and um, Technically there was no tools, but the glass came down on my finger and almost cut it completely off. I had to get reconstructive surgery um, twice on that finger. And if you go back into my older videos, you can see me wearing a cast or an arm support that goes here all the way up my arm. Everybody thought I broke my entire hand. I was like, no, no, just cut my finger off. I'll be okay, I got 10. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think that this actually, the colors and the texture actually match. So I think this is going to look relatively good. 
I gotta be honest though, guys, I think this will be cool, but I'm really excited to watch once again, because it was years ago when I kind of like got African cichlids for the first time. And uh, you guys were absolutely amazed. Now like every YouTuber gotta have them and I don't blame them, absolutely fascinating fish, but uh, I'm really excited to be able to have on site a comparison between a tank with predators actively in there with you, because I gotta tell you, they're acting completely different versus what they're gonna be like in here. Where are they gonna swim? How are they, is their colors or aggression? Or will they breed more? What's going to happen? So we'll be able to answer those questions here shortly because I got a lot of really cool ideas that I wanna bring to you guys and show you in comparisons. I'm not gonna ruin too many surprises, but my mind is going a mile a minute out here. Uh, and uh, I think you guys are really gonna love it. I only have to cut off a little bit to fit this in here, I think. That's the beauty of these. See, just absolutely, oh, they're like next to impossible to, to destroy. I mean, that's why I like them a lot. Put something in my hands and I'm eventually going to break it. I, you know what I might do though? I might trim it so it all matches. Give me a second here. Awkward decor, sitting at home just cursing at the computer right now or the TV or however they watch me. This is the last thing Aqua Decor is ever going to send me. Because <laughs> I like cut everything apart. But they know it's me! Plus I'm a guy, I just want to use tools. Now that's the beauty of these things though, I mean... If, they, uh, if they're not fitting perfect... They have slammed this down. If they don't fit perfectly, or you won't need to do something else. Just cut it. The downside is I don't know what the front and what the back is, so I picked what I thought was gonna go, look good. And because I'm going with sponge filters, which are incredibly popular and common, I just put it right behind the rock or something. I think it's gonna look really good. And next thing I gotta do is make sure this is gonna fit. This is gonna be a little bit more difficult. See, these things, like, there's no breaking these. And this is super cool. They come stamped. All right. I've promoted Aqua Decor backgrounds for like four or five years to help, but for obvious reasons. I mean, they don't pay me, by the way. This is just like, they send me some stuff and they know I love it. So they keep sending it to me. So what I'm thinking here is just kind of, hopefully, maybe do a somewhat accurate cut. I'm thinking right around here look, look, look good. It's almost like this was meant for this. The, it's so like very close in dimensions as it was. There. This is one of the new backgrounds <laughs> that they offer for 40 gallon aquariums. Do you think they're ever gonna send me more stuff? Maybe I should stop cutting all this stuff up and, <laughs> and making it do what I want. Aqua Decor, please send me more stuff. I love this stuff. I think I would put it here. So I have other plans for over there. As silly as that sounds. See, I just drop these bad boys in there. I don't even glue them in place or nothing like that. They don't need to be. You get them in. You get they cut. They cut them exactly to your spec. So that looks like a. It looks like one that you put on the back. It fits it so perfect. Right, this one next. Which way did I say I was gonna do this? I don't remember. I'm gonna have to do a water change on this tank. I got all this debris in it. Timeless though. It's just plastic or fiberglass and stuff. I actually don't know. I should have made sure I should have double checked 
that these fit first. <laughs> I'll make it fit. Oh, it fits. I wonder how many things they built where they went to go put it in a tank and it didn't fit. So like, oops. I'm gonna add in some sand right now. Shell dwellers do technically require sand. A fine sand, not too fine. We're like um, a little bit smaller than like pool filtration. Pool filtration will work. That's what's in that tank over there. Um, but they require a sand as well as they require shells, obviously, shell dwellers. Anyways, I tossed the uh, filter into the background there. And all I'm going to do here is this, none of this is rinsed, so it might cause the tank to be cloudy. But as you can see here, um, you can see that it doesn't necessarily cover the whole thing. So I'm going to focus around the edges and uh, that should do it. Just kind of fill it in back there. Like that, right? I'm probably only going to need two, maybe four liters of water. Or I'm sorry, uh, sand. I'm putting it in a little liter bottle so I can add it in now without, you know, kind of needing to rinse it too much. And cover some of these stones. Although the shell dwellers are going to do absolutely anything they want in here. But uh, I think the focus will be on the edges here. I'll put the shells there. And of course on the other side. And maybe some in between. But we'll see what happens there. I'm just... Uh, I want sand to be everywhere, but I also want to be able to actually kind of see the rocks. Gives the uh, gives the tank a little bit more character, I guess you could say. Yeah, I, I probably shouldn't be too worried about the sand. The, the, these guys are really going to move it all around, do whatever they want anyway. Yeah, so ideally, you know, shell dwellers don't technically require escape of any sort, but uh, they'll do fine in here. You know, maybe instead of centering it, maybe I should push it all the way over here and have them live on this end. I think I'm going to try that see what that looks like. Yeah, that looks way better, a little bit more natural as well. Anything too centered and I just don't like the feel of it. Um, this gives them, a, I'll probably end up putting most of the shells over here and a couple behind there in case I, I mess up and there's more than one male in here, I'll give them their own territories. But um, I think this is gonna work out really, really nicely. It looks way better than I thought it was going to as well. A little cloudy here so we can't really see the background, but you know, that's what happens when you don't rinse your substrate first. Um, and you just add in uh, everything to it. Yeah, this is gonna look fantastic. Yeah, once this clears up, and watch this, this is the positioning of the lights. All we can do, and try this at home if you have a, like a strip light of any sort, move it to the front and to the back, see what you like more. See, watch this. This will highlight the front more, and then I push it to the back. I've done this for years. It's always like, if I don't like the way a tank looks, I'll just reposition the lighting. And then it's almost like you get a whole new tank with new dimensions. Isn't that cool? So now the light's all the way pushed to the back. We're creating, sh uh, you know, uh, shadows and more more depth to the tank almost. Uh, and again, once we pull it forward, yeah. See how cool that looks? Maybe that, maybe that even looks better. Which one do you guys like? Let me know what you think. You think light all the way to the back or all the way to the front? I mean, in the center, I'm not, a, I don't know. The tank's also cloudy, so we gotta wait. But yeah, so this is gonna be the African Shell Dweller Aquarium. I think they're going to love it. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Uh, let me know what you think about this thing. These already pre-planned scapes. I thought it was super cool. And they do have air to, uh, holes in them to let the, the air out so nothing gets trapped in them. But uh, yeah, I think this is going to be absolutely awesome. I'd love to know your guys' thoughts. Let me know uh, Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. I, I come to think about it, I think this is like the first aquarium of its kind. I'm finally first. For all you guys that comment first in the comment section, I'm first now. First! <laughs> yeah, that's it. And the, and the more I look at it and the further... Well, there's big bright lights on me right now. Podcast lighting. So, oh yeah. I should probably show you a few things. Let's go put you guys right there for just a second. You're on top of the piranha tank. Don't fall in. You're not going to like it. So, when I said I was bringing the podcast out here, if some people were like, oh, this area, space is cramped. There's too much going on there. I had the, It's a multi functional area. Not only do we do the podcast and we have this as a backdrop, but now I have a work table. You guys see me building the fish tank and the stands and everything on them. Um, obviously I gotta clean it off, but it's a solid wood table and it's six feet long, a little more than two feet wide. Now the lighting. I don't have to have lights throughout the entire gallery anymore, but I know you guys can't see me. I can move this wherever I need it, whenever the camera's following me. Um, 
and then obviously I put it right back up and it's just under my head. So yes, it might look like an eyesore in the middle. I absolutely love it. I love its functionality and I like the way everything's working out. There's, I always have a method to my madness. I think most of you know that by now. Anyways, if you want to join along for this journey of my madness, including putting tanks, big old 375 gallon tanks on top of big old 2000 gallon tanks, make sure you subscribe if you're not already, because you're going to miss it. I got these six tanks to set up. I, got, I still got to do the 120s. There's four of them. Got to build the racking system for the 180s, scape them and the 180s. They won't have backgrounds or anything. I'm going to paint them black, I think, maybe blue. We'll, we'll cross that bridge when I get to it, but I'll let you guys have an input there as well. But I'm pretty sure I'm going to paint the black. I gotta build certain filters for them, et cetera. Look at the filters there on the floor. Ooh, them, those are some bad boy filters. Wait till you guys see it. Maybe you've already seen it. I'm not sure when this video is coming out. I hope that I don't put it out too soon. I, this is what happens at nighttime. I just get in here and I'm like, oh, I really wanna set something up. I really wanna get my hands dirty. I really wanna do something. And I'm like, well, I gotta film it because these guys are gonna kill me if I don't show them. So Lord knows when this video is gonna come out. Hopefully I'll have a haircut by then. See you guys in the next video.